Okay. Last week, um, see, this is much nicer music for a discussion. Um, the home run in the first inning, then a uh, strike last out. week, you uh, <laughs> crashed an airship successfully. Mission failed successfully, if you will. Um, we died right after the checkpoint, so we were able to continue. Yeah, there you go. That's what the blackout was. <laughs> <laughs> Loading. <laughs> Loading your last save. Um, what was I saying? Oh. Crashed an airship uh, successfully. Bob's going to check. Oh, that was cute. <laughs> that was cute. <laughs> um, all right, uh, you crash landed. Um, after several attempts to save the ship, you managed to slow its descent and right its fall a bit, to the point where you ended up quite a bit closer to your final destination. That sounds ominous. Um, then you would have originally been. Uh, all of you survived. Some of the soldiers on the ship were not nearly so lucky. Estinian and Emmerich managed to survive, though Estinian had a rather bad Break, uh, broken rib. Um, what am I forgetting? Oh, yeah. Oh, Emmerich. Yeah. Did I say Estinian? I meant Emmerich. I meant Emmerich. I was thinking Emmerich, but I said Estinian. Uh, Estinian was, for more or all intents and purposes, unharmed, as far as you can tell. Um, just a little bit winded. Genbu swan dove out of the hole in the ship, and then Misty stepped to safety. Uh, Omega went hang gliding for a little while, and then ended up right back on the ship, uh, which is amazing. And uh, you rested in a cave for the evening, and the morning comes and you're getting ready to head on to Fallboard Float, a settlement that is nearby. Uh, I think that's where we're going to pick up. Here's Josh Donaldson. Oh, so was a, I was a good sleep. Interesting. Uh, Donaldson kind of finds himself in the same situation. Uh, I think himself. we know what the plan is. Uh, so, uh, who's leading? A lot of company. Now, I, I want to remind you, I, I am the leader, as uh, as made by the governor. It basically makes me like a king, almost. Uh, but I'm gonna let you guys lead because it seems like you know which way to go where we're trying to get those dragons, you know. Yeah. Now, just remind me, dragons are worms, right? So we're gonna be seeing a lot of worms and dragons as we go. Uh, a worm is a type of dragon, Kevin. Uh, classifications and. But uh, yeah, um, how far are we away from this uh, fall gourd float? Uh, you were, what did I say last night? Uh, 20 malls? I think I said 20 malls last night. That sounds And it seems like... Oh no, yeah, sorry, 20, 100 to our destination, 20 to the... the and I, I believe... Uh, Stinian seems to think we can make that in one day. Now it's two two, a chance to put together the first twins one two three innings. As long as we ride on Chocobo back, we should be able to. That's another chance, maybe finally get this game tied up. They've been playing from behind all night long by as many as three runs, but it's just one run. So, where, so where are we getting these Chocobos? As I told you earlier, twice, Falgord Float is famous for raising Chocobos. Oh, you know what I, my, what my granddad always used to say is, it's best you tell someone three times to make sure they got it, because two times may not be enough. Well, that was the third time. Do you have it now? What was the name of the place we're going again? <laughs> this dude just walks away. <laughs> he just straight up walks away. <laughs> well, that was rude. I, I just don't get it. I mean, don't you want everyone to understand the plan? This. Anyway, I think we're just going to follow him, right? You'll have to forgive him. He gets a bit testy when we get near dragons. I, I can understand. I, I mean, oh, uh, September, how's your rib doing? Feels as good as new, as if I hadn't broken it, aside from the mental trauma associated with it. Oh, 
Oh, do your kind have uh, brains in your ribs too? Is is that what makes you so strong? Two. Brains in your ribs, you know. Uh, there's mental trauma there. I'm I'm trying to figure out how it all works. Uh, no, we do not have brains in our ribs. I'm not really sure how to respond to that one further. Can one of you help? Welcome to the club. Uh, <laughs> I guess Estinian knows the way. Uh, well, certainly seems to. I do have some pictures. What do you, what do you have there, Millie? She'll, uh, covertly gesture to the bag for the little fist-sized objects that she borrowed last night. Limited number of innings. The dragon gems. Strike out two ground ball outs. Uh, Sid will take them and, uh, well, let's see. Third strike. I will. Says, hey, settle down. Come on. Hang on one second. Yeah, really good pitch. Is Identify a ritual cast? Yes. yes. It can be. Uh, it's not solely a ritual cast, but, uh, yeah. If, we, if, we, if we're not, if we're not, if we're not running, then yeah, I'm, I'll ritual yeah, cast identify true. on it. Are you? Hmm. Should I allow you to do that while in motion? Heck of a at bat here by Donaldson. You can say you did it before you left the cave. Okay. Right. What is it? That was my intention, like during breakfast preparation. What is it that you're identifying? The gems we totally didn't break statues to get. Right. Or one of them, because they're identical. Okay. What is it you're trying to learn about these? As we move uh, into the later I'm not entirely. I did have a chance <laughs> okay, well, I'm, I'm just curious if there's something you want to against his leg. Um, sure, after 10 minutes of identifying it, and this is something I believe Sherbin did this before, and she was unable to fully determine it, not to, we did it on the jets. Not, no, not we, to the jets. No, we didn't get the orb in the road. Yeah. That's right. No intention of swinging after That's right. watching That's right. Donaldson draw. Uh, okay. These gems uh, are enchanted to ward off potential robbers. That is the the extent of the the cold magic that it was giving off. Uh, it's a minor curse, a minor hex. Beyond that, it doesn't have any enchantment. There's, does it there's no like, other natural properties. Does it seem like it's diminished from... Uh, you know, slightly. But it, it's not... Its power wasn't tied to the fact that it was in the guidepost. It was... The power has a certain amount of juice, and you guys use some of it up by continuously touching it. So, <laughs> that's why it's slightly diminished. Uh, uh, it seems pretty ordinary, Millie. Uh, outside of, you know, the whole... Frostbite thing. Um, what is it that you got there? See, a, a gem that we had found out on the on the road on the way to uh, on the way to uh, Ishgar. Well, while we were going through Kurthus. Would those be the gems that you are accused of stealing, by any chance? So, they, we can't be sure. But we found them on the way. I don't know if anybody plucked them out. We noticed that they were missing from the statues on the way. It's all right, be at ease. I don't really care for all that superstition. It's actually rather funny. Suffice to say... <laughs> they are a little more than we bargained for. I would say so. Did you clean your... <laughs> Yep, wet washcloth, then let it dry. Work well. Foul back three and two. Trying to chase ball four. <laughs> um, that is uh, <laughs> an interesting proposition. I myself am not one for the arcane magics nor engineering, so I have no idea what the effect might be. But uh, best of luck. That I'm not on the bag. Don't turn and throw, I'm not be Shall we get going? 
So they know what? with two outs that Donaldson. Oh, no better time than right now, I say. All right, I got pictures. Yeah, take, take away the extra base hit. Somewhere. Rise another 10, 15 feet. From your encampment. With Polanco in short right field, a 3-2 pitch. Here's the morning view. Yeah, we'll walk. probably take a second to blow. looks off in the distance again. Probably going to get a trip at least from West Johnson here. No activity in the Twins' pen. And then this is at Sid and Fifi. Back to back so Fifi's not here right now. And now I say a kinder Falafa. Well, another very close pitch. I assume if he, if you could. Make you throw the ball over. Seventh walk taken by the Yankees. They have nine hits. And almost right, miraculously. None of the seven walkers have scored, although one walk did force in a run. There's a strike. Look at all that not snow. Yep. It is. Uh, it's chilly. Outfield flies. Um, well, it, it's cool. Not super looking. cold, but there is a chill to the air. Totally thought those trees with that other tree branch coming out the side was like, did you actually find an airship wreck in this no, area? <laughs> I was intending that to be uh, the area where your airship crashed and knocked down trees and shit like that. So that was the intent. Well, looks great, but I just thought like that was a mast with the cross piece. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think there's any airship crashes in the northern crowd. <laughs> there's only a few shipwrecks I can think of, actually. Probably in heaven's word if it was anywhere in the uh, floating island place. No comment. All right. So that's what you see. You begin um, your trek out. Along the way, you see various monsters roaming around. These are entirely alien to the things that you've seen around you. Uh, you see giant scorpions. Nemeric and uh, Estinian refer to as dire mites. You see uh, large floating orange creatures that are called balloons by some and bombs by others. Uh, in either case, you're uh, advised to stay away from them and to not anger them lest they explode, as the name would imply. And uh, there's also slug-like, slimy creatures that are roaming around, kind of skulking about. And it looks like some of them are, are trying to uh, suss out whether or not you're food. You are food. Uh, but they're keeping their distance. You are larger than them, even though that doesn't seem that intimidating. Another uh, O2. And lizard things? But I don't think that's in the picture. There's some on the side hit by the hill over here. Which ones? Those little lizard dudes. Like oh, frilled neck. Nope, those are cockatrices. You see those too. Your advice to stay away from those, lest you want to be turned to stone. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even realize those were in there. I do know at one point when I was taking pictures, right when I hit the snap button, somebody flew by on a chocobo. <laughs> and I was joking with Jess, uh, we were like, oh, maybe you'll actually get some daytime pictures. Anytime I take them from you, it's either nighttime or it's raining. And literally, as soon as I get there, it started raining. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Never fails. Yeah. Alright, so. Um, now this is a celebration. You've been, you've been moving at a brisk pace now for approximately four hours. When because this comes into view, you realize that you're getting close. You've been walking uh, pretty steadily. Exactly. Oh my! Here's a picture, and you see. I better say it's brisk, maybe. Yep, it does. <laughs> nice. I hate iced tea, but those commercials made me always want to try. I actually right? love brisk. Brisk was great. Well, I mean, it's, it's got, got a billion sour. grams of sugar in it. Yes, <laughs> yes. And I haven't had one in, like, decades. That's just a dais. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I, I like to know what you're saying to the other players. Yeah. It's kind uh, of important secret, for me. I think and not vigorously. <laughs> Surprising no one. <laughs> I mean, they are just kind of floating there. <laughs> Second base. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, yeah. Uh, 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 what's that, that floaty thing? Is that another airship? Uh, are you referring to the bombs, the balloons, whatever you want to call them that we literally just told you about? <laughs> oh, is that what you were talking about? You try to pay attention, Kevin. I know it's I just, I'm just get confused no, because, you know, there's not a lot of things that, uh, I mean, where we come from, nothing really flies. And now yeah, I've already seen an airship. I've, uh, I've seen this bomb thing. I didn't know that's what you guys are talking about. Uh, anything else I should know that flies outside? Oh, and chocobos. <laughs> I mean, what doesn't yeah. fly around here? I don't know that anyone's ever tried. It seems a hazard. <laughs> the first and last attempt. <laughs> yes. Well, I do believe I see fog will float in the distance. Yes, I do. Um, <laughs> so there is a decline in the hill leading down towards what you could only assume is fall or float, and you see the telltale signs of an etherite. Uh, and as you approach... Boost back in the middle. <laughs> yeah. You see a little bit more of it, but here's the gates leading into Fallbird Float. It's surprisingly empty around here. You don't see anyone really moving around. Is that a holiday? Are they all celebrating somewhere? Uh, I'm sorry? Is it a holiday? Oh, no, I heard you. Uh, Kevin's saying, well, uh, uh, what? Holiday. What do you mean, holiday? Like, like, like what? Uh, what does that have to do with us being here? Well, I'm not worried about you. I'm worried about there not being enough people around. Oh, oh, there's supposed to be people here. Do you think they built my ants? I mean, uh, it looks bigger. Uh, I don't think uh, it might be too big for ants to be around. <laughs> I suppose we should uh, uh, attune to that that aetherite while we're here. Walk slowly and be on your guard. I don't like the look of this. Should be a bustling settlement, based on the last time I was here. Chop to the right side. But Sherbin, come on. Sherbin's got family here, right? He's got uh, one of her husbands is running around the Black Shroud, yeah. In the North Shroud or another part? Black Shroud. He's somewhere. <laughs> He's somewhere in the Shroud. He's somewhere. Yeah. Last you spoke with him, he was hanging out at Quarry Mill, which okay. is not near me. Numbers not great on the year. This is said the bridge could be a good thing. To the later innings. He's exploring the Palace of the Dead. Okay. Half <laughs> great one that one. That, that guy. Whatever his name is. <laughs> Sorry. What was that question? Oh, I said he's a brave one for exploring the Palace of the Dead, wherever he's in. Okay. He's not actually doing that. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. So, you progress through Fallboard Float, and it is quiet. It is... You hear water running, you hear the sound of a water wheel turning. And you can look around and you see the buildings around here kind of give evidence of such. Um, eventually you approach the Aetherite Crystal. And again, nobody's nearby. Ignore the fact that there's somebody in that picture. <laughs> like I said, some people screwing up my pictures. <laughs> Was that the same building from the first picture? Uh, that is a different building. There are lights in the windows, there's just nobody outside, and it is early afternoon. It's a nice afternoon. Not too bad, 
I would like to believe that if there were any kind of presence of Beatrice Brood here, we'd have seen them by now, no? I told you, they're crafty. Save your spot with online check-in. Save time by saving your spot. The Gridanians are weak, but it's gonna be great. they do know how to tell us uh, how to gather information and spread it amongst their allies. Uh, are they friend or foe? Like, are we getting a fire? No. Gridania? Unlikely. Oh. Why we gotta be all uh, secret and, and stuff? Billy, I wouldn't go alone if you could help it. She's already sneaking off. I go. just think the best thing to do. So still within visual side of the group. Okay. But just to peek in the window of. Um, I guess, is there any visual distinction between the buildings? They all appear to be the same make, but not the same model. But um, not track homes. <laughs> no, they're not track homes. Um, in the picture I sent right before this one, you see. Um, did I send that one? So see, there's the one building that's across from the eighth to right, which I thought was the same building. Yeah. I didn't send this one. That building, that central, that's what I meant to send before. The one that's on stilts above the water there, that's, that one stands out amongst the rest. Okay. Yeah, that's the one. I see the rain. Uh, Millie wants to go peek through one of those smaller, lower level windows. I, okay. I think, I think the best thing to do before, before like, Millie goes out, I think the best thing you do is, uh, you know, whenever you come to uh, someone's place, someone's town, just to announce yourself. I mean, that's, that's the proper way to do it. I mean, the ex always announced herself when she came, he, she came to our farm. I always announced myself when I came to her shop. Why are we not announcing ourselves? I mean, if anything, sneaking around is going to get us all killed. Uh, there's a certain logic to what he says. It hurts me to say. Right here on MLB.tv. I'm sure it's how people feel like they're part of a team. But I'm still I'm doing my thing. All right, Kevin, Just go ahead. Through a window. Uh, 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 hey, hey, uh, people of this village, uh, we're here. We don't mean any harm. We're here to take care of some dragons and whatnot. And, uh, you know, uh, we hope to get some passage and then maybe get some chocobos. If you're here, uh, be nice if you showed yourself. We mean no harm. Sid and Sherbin. Um, hold on one second. Uh, okay, Melly, you get uh, distracted by the water. Some fish. <laughs> but Sherbin and Sid, you spot some movement, uh, like, like brief flickers of movement through one of the windows in the large building. Does he want to get beat uh, after Kevin starts shouting? Buxton likes to swing early. Buxton likes to go up there and try to do damage. Wait, I saw someone Kevin. over there. At the window. There was a, a bit of movement I saw. Interesting to see how this at bat plays out. Even if you don't get the first pitch. Merely, go check over there at that window. I think I saw someone over there. So which of those windows would it have been? It was um, the one to the left of the door. So the small window left of the door? So what you have to understand is we weren't even supposed to be here. We're in this like uh, ship that flies, an airship. And we got attacked and we almost all died. We lost some of our crew. And now we're just trying to get on our way. I, if you come out, I promise we won't be much of a bother. We won't even be here for that long. Millie's gonna peek through the one window past that one. Okay. Since it looks like it is combing around the sides. Yes. So you're like under. Yeah, I'm deliberately walking underneath the peripheral of the window. So, in okay. theory, I'm walking beneath the windowsill. So I'm picturing this happening while Kevin is, yes. <laughs> is shouting. And you look up at the window and you see a gang of people just inside there, kind of huddled together. Several of them, you know, like holding spears in case anybody comes trying to rush in. Um, they don't seem to have noticed. That's what'll frustrate you, the, the inconsistency of, of it all. Sure, when you, are you sure you saw someone over there? Yeah, so Millie will uh, press her. I, I saw it too. Twice. Uh, signal 
was uh, hazards ahead, continuing, proceed with caution. Okay, so that I'll uh, pull out my gun and I'll keep an eye on Millie to make sure that she's okay. As you pull out your gun, Millie, you see inside some of the ones that are looking through like peepholes or windows, but they start to get a little bit more tense. They're like, they're like doing like this, and you see some people pulling it across the No, 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 DX, DX, you might scare them away. Look, look, like I said, we mean no harm. I take out uh, my sword. I'm gonna put it on the ground, like this. And I drop it on the ground. I, t I take a step back. Like I said, uh, if you're there, my, my friend said they already saw movement. We mean no harm. Um, and maybe bring someone out, like one representation, to, so you can talk to us and, and trust us. I am speaking for the group. At this point, a small little girl lifts her head up literally at the window where Millie is and makes eye contact with Millie. Like, she was hiding below the window. She, she just comes up to look out and she just makes eye contact with Millie. Well, then Millie's going to slide this up. <laughs> and she window. screams and runs. But yeah, so she's going to leave that at the window clear so that everybody can read it until something happens. See if they can read. Um, uh, well, if it's a town of cabins, <laughs> they're better off dead. Wow. <laughs> There's Millie uh, promoting uh, uh, eugenics. <laughs> My God. <laughs> it got dark real quick. Okay. So, um, you say we got a deep. Several people are now rushing towards the window where you are. And uh, eventually noticing that you see them. Right, like, like it's been very One obvious that you know they're there. Several of them come out from an upper balcony, all of them training crossbows on your group, and several are come out of the doors. Like, we're talking like a dozen people come out of the doors. They look like farmhands, uh, uh, pretty common folk, not really trained necessarily. And they all have battered-looking spears, and they're just kind of holding it out like, I don't know what you want. Go away. That kid's not for you. Again, we, we come in peace. Uh, 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 you don't look like fighters. I mean, I wasn't really a fighter uh, too long ago. Uh, but like I said, we, we come in peace. My sword's still there, as you can see. We mean no harm. We're just trying to pass through and get to some chocobos. Uh, we were told uh, this is the way through. We're trying to rid the land of some dragons that here are causing problems for people. Not sure if they're causing problems for you. Well, that's what we're trying to do. Upon the mention of dragons, you see like several of them to start like nervously whispering to each other. Dragons too is, is one of the things that you hear. Dragons, dragons, dragons. What, uh, what else are you? What else are you guys dealing with here? I don't like this. Silence, clone. Oh, our thoughts go out to that oh, well. for you. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't think you meant that. Her, her name's Sherwin. Uh, her name's definitely not Clone. Think about what you were able to accomplish. Well, a lot of great memories, you know. It's, uh, you know, thinking about you know, all the people like here. It's one of the cities that paved the road for me. So many people. How do we know you're who you say you are? You don't know who we are. So many who else would that be? <laughs> Get out. Of my life and my maturation, and I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the They're going to attack us. We're we're here with a, a knight of Ishgard and and a widely known I dragoon, I believe. Yeah, uh, it's been he's not widely known. known within Ishgard, uh, but he's just sitting there with this gigantic scowl on his face. Uh, Emmerich is trying to be amicable, and, and, and he's got like this, this very warm, like, become in peace kind of look on his face, but Estinian's just sitting there like, are you fucking kidding me right now? <laughs> that kind of look. Uh, is the kid outside with the... No, she's inside. She's, she's literally looking at you through the window. Is there a window sill on the outside? Yes. Uh, Millie's gonna put the Mr. Knight on the window sill. Let's let it dance around on the window sill. Uh, <laughs> She's the look of 
you know, pure fear that seeing your group kind of just fades away as she's entranced watching the, the wind-up night walk around on the windowsill. They've got automaton! <laughs> it's like, it starts tilting at windmills, but it's tilting at window panes. <laughs> There's a Don Quixote quest in uh, Tiny Tina's too, which are also that's cool. hilarious. <laughs> um, there's an entire section of The Witcher. One of the expansions is basically Don Quixote. It, it's like fantasy, fantasy France kind of thing. Oh, yeah. That's cool. I, yeah, I need to do the Blood and Wine one. That's, yeah, that's, that's the one I've heard is been, it's really like, better than the base game. Look, I'm not the brightest guy here. I, I'm gonna admit it, but one thing I will say well, is, you know, you gotta have a little trust. Because if you don't trust us and we don't trust you, then we're all gonna have to fight. A lot of people might die, and we're trying to avoid that because we just had a bunch of people die on the airship, and we're all just trying to survive. So look, you hear a bunch of uh, crossbows cocking as you're talking because you just said a bunch of you were gonna die. <laughs> So what I'm saying is a little bit of trust will go a long way and no one has to fight or get hurt. Put down your weapons. I already put down my weapon. My sword's right there. The rest of you did it. Oh, you were serious. I don't know. I can't speak for everyone. Everyone's an independent person. Well, they could see that you're wearing weapons. Maybe not Millie, but the rest of you guys are pretty clearly wearing weapons. All right. Oh, no. Here's my dagger. It's so scary. Should have. Oh, oh, Lanfifi's going to take her, her tiny Lollafell sized dagger and put it on the ground. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Emmerich takes out his sword, which is fucking gorgeous by the way. It's like this blue and... It's blue and white with gold inlay all throughout it, and it feels like it's glowing even if it's not. It's, it's an awesome sword. Um, he unsheathes it and puts it on the ground and then motions for the remaining five soldiers that are with you to do the same with their weapons, and they do. Subverting Millie's command, I see how it is. What was your command? The five soldiers are Millie's misfits. <laughs> <laughs> so you say. So I say. <laughs> Sherbin's gonna slowly put down her short sword and heavy crossbow, but she's gonna keep her cards and her um, star glow. Yeah, because those don't seem like weapons. Uh, Kevin will uh, take out his uh, dark sword and stick it in the ground. He'll take two damage from doing that. Okay. Is there anyone in the group who looks less um, farm handy than the others? That's like yeah. half of us. Oh, yeah, not your chance of that. They're, they're <laughs> talking, he's talking about the, the people <laughs> of the left handed No one looks like they're the tavern keeper or. There are some that are considerably burlier than others, and then there are some that are also considerably weaker, but none of them appear to be, you know, above, you know, peasant status. Well, no, I'm, I'm more so looking for, like, a farmhand is going to have rough, calloused hands, whereas someone who might be a peasant but works not with physical labor will look distinctly different. I want to find someone yeah, who fits that. They all, aside from the children, it appears they all have physical chores. Okay, then Millie, uh, an old woman. Is there an old woman in the group? There is an, there's one elderly woman. Uh, Millie's going to go to the elderly woman on the hopes that she can read and ask what is the role. Hold on, I haven't had to read for a while. And she puts on her glasses. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, one one lens of her glass is missing. The other one is cracked, but she puts them Aww. on. And she's trying to read what you've got there. Brawl? Is that right? Is that what you wrote? Come on, speak up, girl. Uh, she, she can't <laughs> speak, man. Oh. That's, uh, unfortunate. Breaking ball missing to I don't think these are the folks we're looking for. Yeah, she says this to some of the others. And you're getting the impression that she's in charge. That was my guess. Yeah. Uh, she, she's, um, she kind of pushes you out of the way. She's like, hang on a second. She just walks right up to your group. All right. State your business again. Clearly is time in a coherent way. We, uh, oh, uh, 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 I'm Kevin, Kevin King. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kevin. all you. 
We were on our way uh, through the air when our airship crashed nearby, and uh, we were hoping to get some chocobo to take us the rest of our way to our destination. And there's, we were, there's some murmurs when you mention that the airship crashed. Like, a lot of the people are just like... Just, you can't really make out what they're saying, but they seem very interested in that. She goes, is that the big commotion that we heard? That would be the big commotion that you heard, yes. Oh. We thought the, the Dark Divinity was back. The, uh, with the what? Oh, don't worry, pretty little head. Uh, this is a higher woman. She's kind of hunched over. In fact, you notice that the entirety of the people here are higher. They're, they're all high. Uh, I think they're all right. All right. Go on inside. Out of the chill. And she's just like, she just walks. She like, she like, just walks straight into the building and like pushes open the doors and just leaves them open for your entourage to walk through. All right. I thank you kindly. Uh, I'll let Sid do the talking from here. Pick up my stuff off the ground. Same. Okay. And Follow. Going in. Follow. Yeah. She, uh, as center, you're all coming in, you're high. walking in, she just like stares up and dares. Nice you're a tall one. Yeah, 6'2", not good in the ears. Nice tail. It just smacks your ass. No. <laughs> <laughs> Millie can clutch her tail and <laughs> <laughs> avoid the old lady. <laughs> I'm just picturing like a cat that's been stepped on before, like fighting its tail. Nor a second ago. Yeah, you guys can't see because you're not here. Ha, you suck. Um, Get Only get locals get bomb that. privileges. That's right. <laughs> oh no! Oh, I guess we lost Adam because he's only stuck. He gets baby privileges. That's probably better. Is Stinian as Judge Dredd? Is that what you're implying? He said he had a, like a super scowl, and I know he always wears this helmet. And that's the only thing that I know. <laughs> that's the the helmet. Fair enough. He's definitely the walking sign saying, I am the law. <laughs> Coming into this inning, the Yankees were one for seven with runners in scoring position. Honestly, so now I feel like you have, that's canon, you have to pay Estinian a judge. <laughs> um, no. All right, so uh, now that you're all in the building, the inside of the building seems pretty well kept. It's swept up, it's clean. You gather that this is uh, the, the local watering hole for the for the town, for the settlement here. It's it's less of a town, more of a small settlement, like a gathering of homes that were built by uh, by people who settled here. Kind of like tail feather. It's more a, it's it's more organized than tail feather. But just there. Gotcha. Uh, Tail feather is definitely more rustic and in the wild. This is a little bit closer to civilization. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, yeah. So, uh, where was I? Oh, so the two, lady. Lady. The, the, the two story building. Um, and the lady goes behind the bar and she just pulls up a stool and sits on it and then Strike grabs a walking stick and kind of leans on that while she's on the stool. Um, there, on the upper floor, all of the people who are pointing crossbows at you from outside, they're all ringed around the top now. Uh, not pointing their weapons at you, but kind of at the ready. Um, nobody really has their weapons drawn right now, even the ones downstairs with you. Uh, but they're also, it, it's pretty clear that they're not immediately trusting. Uh, Kevin immediately grabs the old woman, takes out a sword, holds her. No, just kidding. never mind. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Honestly, I was like, okay, that's the Kevin thing. All right. doing. <laughs> I have your woman. I'm gonna kill her if we don't get what we want. Choke a pose. <laughs> just kidding. He says he doesn't do a face. The last time that anyone in this group murdered hobo to town, 
and I don't think you have. No, we've been pretty uh, good about it. Up since I started with the group, I haven't. I don't think they did it even before you. Up to the I was okay. okay. So you're not a bad influence, Jimmy. Kind of yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a magnet, waiting my time. <laughs> uh, yeah, even our evil characters are trying. I, I won't, yeah, Christian's character got the closest. <laughs> I mean, next campaign, you could all play evil characters. But against the toughest adversary. Let's talk about it. For as long as it wasn't specifically a murder hobo campaign. That I mean, it won't be specifically that, but it's probably going to be part of it. <laughs> if it happens for a reason, sure, but just the evil, like killing people for the sake of killing people, is boring evil. You gotta be magnus about it. Yeah, that was, yeah. That was brilliant. That'd be a you said it really kind of a toll on you, though, huh? Always being yeah. Like well, that. okay. So you know how like Sid gets like really like frustrated sometimes with wrangling the group. That's why it was with these, those those machinations I had. Cause, like I had this plan on something and then nobody would fall <laughs> for it. And it's like the the left ship messed us up. It's like, oh, the yeah. left ship messed up a lot. Cause if we had stayed in Pathfinder, Millie, not Millie, Amelia had an ability that as her paladin levels grew, she could sense the presence of evil around her to the point where when we hit about level 12, it would be an immediate red flag that Magnus generated an aura of evil. And that would have wildly changed the, the story. There isn't in Pathfinder. I had a noble alignment. Is that a spell? Yep, and I cast it every single day. So Will almost, <laughs> almost got me early on before I had it. What's like the duration? Um, I think it's like an eight-hour period. Ah, but see, if we're in a group 24-7, it's not a spell that Amelia has. It's just a constant awareness. Right. But, yeah. Yeah. Ask that of the old lady. Now Kepler with a sacrifice fly walk. Well, I can't get any more broken than they are unless you destroy the other ones and she just takes them off and answers them. The angle right there of how he turns that over and gets that to fade against... Because Emilio will hold it up and then just whistle at a really high pitch like it's, you're going to try to like break a wine glass but cast some ending and fixes it and hands it back. So that only fixes the cracked lens. It doesn't yeah. replace the broken. Uh, the, yeah, but a crack in a lens is fucking terrible. <laughs> and she looks at it. and she goes, Oh, that's handy. Thanks for that. Contact with it. Uh, Here. And she just reaches Here's down and she pulls off a crust of red and puts it in front of her. An audible sound, mm -hmm. but I wonder whether Max didn't feel like he... No, I'll take out some of the jerkied meat she has and make a sandwich and toddle off with it. It is incredibly <laughs> tough to bite into, but it's red. Oh, I, you must be all hungry. I, I got some potatoes for y'all, if you're hungry. And I take out some potatoes and just start putting them on the ground. Fresh from my farm, only like five days old now. Uh, it's been longer than that. Only like ten days old now, but they're still good. I mean, you just gotta like chip off those uh, green parts that are grown from them. Still good. Thank you. I, I, I understand how it looks, but he's, he's not wrong. I mean, they're still probably fine. <laughs> We've dealt with the potos before, and she like points to behind the counter. And there's like a satchel full. Of, like, <laughs> 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 now, see, we're that that so we, many we take, sounds, we take Kevin's like sprouting like potatoes and make poisonous vodka with them. Would it be poisonous? If you make potato-based vodka with sprouted potatoes, yes. Really? Because there was a big recall, and that's the reason why you don't really find uh, potato-based vodka anymore. Because there was a batch that got a bunch of people sick. Because it's some, I think it's like arsenic or something grows in the little green things. There was a whole family that got killed by the potatoes in their cellar. I'd like to think that Jimmy has been plotting to kill someone for a while now. He'd just be a part of his band. <laughs> I listen to a lot of murder podcasts, so there's a lot of random facts that I've picked up. Small town murder, great one if anybody's interested in that type of stuff. Hence, red neckery and potato-based vodka that kills people. Anyone smell almonds? Oh, burnt. The 
be a great rendition of Cloud Kill as a spell. What, what, cyanide? Kill? Yeah, but it's just like that's the effect is it's, you know, like a, a, an illusory, invisible Cloud Kill, and that's how you tell it's there. Can cyanide kill as a vapor? I think it only... I think it Magical is, cyanide can kill as a vapor. In normal temperatures, it's a liquid. Unless I'm entirely mistaken. I'm sure if it's a liquid at normal temperatures and vaporizing, it would probably still not be good. Is it a liquid or is it a solid and they just grind it into a powder and put it into it? I don't know. It's probably any number of things. I doubt it's also, I doubt it's pure cyanide. It's usually a composite of some kind when they put it in stuff. You know, I bet if Melinda was here, she would have that answer. She listens to, like, true crime podcasts and shit like that all the time. Uh, okay, anyway. What are you doing in here? Strike in its own, too. Uh, <laughs> uh, we were, we were trying to get some choke about it, continue our our journey. Is there any way that that's possible? Possible? Sure. Where are you going? Look over to Emmerich for a little bit of uh, assistance here. Uh, are you familiar with the Gilmoran ruin to the northeast of here? Another opportunity to get one Sonny, closer. you're asking me if I'm familiar with the gigantic stone ruins that have been here since the day I was born. Yes. After the what of them? Uh, well, we believe that some dragons who have been attacking our ships, including the one that we crashed last night, are stationed within those rooms, and we are here to take them out. So you're here to wage war in our trap. That's the gist of it. She looks around all of them. Actually, oh, we were just flying on the airship, and they attacked us. So if anyone's waging war, it's them. I mean, well, we were just going to go to their den and kill them, and I don't see uh, any problem with that. Same time, you've had opportunities. Yankees have made three errors. I'm going to try to tell the one. Yeah. Uh, can you say that again, Trudeau? I thought we were trying to stop a war. Uh, she has the right. We are, we are trying to remove... <laughs> A dragon to, yes, as Millie says, preemptively prevent a war. It matters not, but many more would die, and I'm afraid some of yours may be caught in the crossfire should we not take care of this now. Ah, altruistic. And she looks up. Daryl! Any dragons in these woods? Oh, uh, no, ma'am. Haven't seen any. There you have it. No dragons. Oh, 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 uh, dragons fly. So if, if you're looking on the ground, you actually got to look up. Uh, they're not worms, you know, like, uh, although they call some of them worms, but they're not the worms that, you know, you put for fishing and, like, uh, that, like, help with the soil. Dra the dragons fly. And Kevin has, like, he's so proud that he's able to, like, impart knowledge to people he thinks <laughs> don't know a dragon. <laughs> like, he's so proud right now. The, the old lady just kind of looks around at your group, and then right at Kevin goes, Darling, you're clearly the brains of the group, aren't you? I, I mean, uh, I, I wouldn't say the brains, but, uh, you know, uh, I get things right from time to time. I feel like this lady has a whole gaggle of Kevins that she's used to dealing with. <laughs> I got six sons just like him. I know what I'm doing. Oh, 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 I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> she looks old. She's actually 42. <laughs> in, uh, in what way are they like him? Yes. <laughs> oh, man. I get, guys, I think we need to go somewhere else. Well, that's what we're turning to do. Oh, heard about so, we lend you choke bows. You go fight some dragons. And then you leave. That's the gist of it. Okay, and what about our chocobos? Ideally, we'd come back here with them. We're speaking. Yes, and what if these invisible dragons of yours Reason kill them? Are fun. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think the only right thing to do is the nation of this guard would take care of it all for you. Get you some brand new chocobos and even get you a little something extra for the trouble. Isn't that right, Sir Turmeric? Basically what yeah. Kevin said. <laughs> yeah. Kevin here has the records. We will release a letter before we leave. Should anything happen to us or the Chocobos, the nation of Ishgard would reimburse your settlement for the cost of the Chocobos and the trouble. Uh, you should probably send the letter uh, to Rick and releasing it wouldn't do anything. <laughs> How right you are, Kevin. This was that one letter we had in the Baldur's Gate campaign very briefly. There's a magical letter you write on it, it folds and flies away. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> we found it in the sewer and never got it back. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's because the person you were sending it to was dead. So yeah, but then, like, we, we tried to fish it out of the soup water and failed. Oh, yeah, that's right. Six more than anyone okay. else in baseball. Two uh, better later than the first, John Carlos uh, Stanton follows with a no doubter to the okay. second deck. Then we got jokes close enough to carry Anthony all of you. We're going to have to pay the rental fee. I want to deposit up front, some of it you'll get back when you return the birds. If not, you pay for it. All of it. Is that a fair deal? It's fair, what's your rates? Well, seeing as you're in need, two gold per person. It'll be Trevor McGill coming out of the twins pen. Shouldn't, uh, shouldn't A Merrick be bankrolling this? I, also, I just want to point out, uh, they, they have this weird currency here. It's called Gil. I, I, I think maybe instead of two gold, whatever that is, we could use Gil instead, because I don't got gold. I corrected myself, asshole. <laughs> I think that's that's more than fair. Yes, absolutely. Um, well, this suffice. And... Emmerich takes a coin pouch um, from off his belt and just puts it down on the table. It is very clearly, it's easily four times as much as she asked for. Did I like what's going on? I don't know whether I saw that. I'm going to give her that. Why? She is helping us out, and as she's pointed, we are in much more need than they are. I'm not sure that's how you make money, though. Inti, uh, Inti, uh, get, get, we got an accountant here. Uh, we always help those who are in need. We are in need, too. We could use that later. Pat, whatever you say, I mean, it is your money. It is the money of the nation of Ishgar, of which we have far too much as it is. Does anyone else okay. protest to my generosity? Three, two. Can't use any money when you're dead, so why don't we handle what we have to handle? <laughs> I can say that better myself, Sid. Thank you. So, will it suffice? Hell, you can keep the chocobos for that much. Plenty to like with McGill, you mentioned. Yeah, we'll get you settled up. I suppose, since you're being so kind and all, we should warn you. If you see. A pale rider on top of a large horse with six legs. Six foot eight. Run. Throws uh, hard. <laughs> Wait, but won't we be flying? Uh, so we'd have to fly? I need the armor. Hey, 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 quick question. Are, are these chocobos the one you have to flap your, your, your arms to make them fly? Or uh, are you? Uh, can you just fly like, like you're in an airship? I will stand behind Kevin and just... Little spots when guys throw hard like this. Millie's doing the exact same thing. <laughs> yes. Flap your arms, and they will fly. Just makes no sense that the people have these chocobos. Uh, I gotta do all the flapping. He just grumbles as he walks away. <laughs> we, we, have, we have to get our joy somewhere. <laughs> I'm gonna cast a, a minor illusion uh, for the old lady to basically a, a picture rendition of Kevin on a black chocobo flapping his arms. Just on the small scale, so she can see what we're getting you that. You drew that? No, uh, minor illusion, the cantrip. Oh, minor illusion. Sorry, I missed that part. Okay, that's funny. And she she giggles a little bit. And she goes, "You, it's that one over there. Come here for a second. And she points at Sherman. Two, two, the Hicks. What's me? Another one to the back. Yeah. Come here. What, what do you, what do you want? She, Sherman, rarely. Warily walks over. You seem like you're the one that's really in charge of this group of 
misfits. So I'm going to tell you, and you can disseminate this information as well as you'd like. If you see someone out there in the woods that looks like one of your friends, but doesn't feel like one of your friends, that's bad. That dark divinity we were talking about takes the form of people that it sees in order to get close and kill you off. Ninth walk issued. That sounds awful. Yes, well, best stay away from Odin now. Odin? Oh, that's the name of this thing? Odin? Most people just call it the dark divinity because they're afraid to say its name. I say that's poppycock. I'm not supposed to stand in front of the mirror and see his name three times. Do I get to summon Odin? If we fight him. <laughs> what did you say? Do I get to summon Odin if we fight him? Odin's not a summonable uh, primal, unfortunately. So no, cool. cool. A little mini Odin. <laughs> yeah. okay. Primal here. Okay. Alright, well, we'll. I'll keep an eye on Al for this. Thank you for the warning. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks for the money. Uh, yes, yes, well, well, don't thank me. Thank, thank that one over there. She motions over to Emmerich. Emmerich is entertaining. He's like dropped down to his knee and he's entertaining a little girl who's telling him the long story about why her teddy bear looks the way it does. <laughs> And he's just, he's just smiling and nodding at her. Patiently. Sherbin, excuse me, first off, she's going to walk over to Sid. Can I say again, please? Sherbin, excuse me, and walks over to Sid. Kind of tugs on to sleep. Or is it dead? Okay. Mm. Mm. I just got word that there's something we should be looking out for. In the forest, something that they have been talking about. Remember, they say something about me. Are we, are we who we think we are? Remember that? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, apparently, apparently that really is a thing. There is something called Odin. And. Jess, you're cutting in and out a lot. Maybe try restarting like you did last time? Alright. That wasn't just us, right? Mm -mm. Okay. That made the score at the time five to three. The Twins got another run on the Polanco home run to make it five four. Well, this is the point where I feel the hair poking seven, in my lip. It's like how time to trip. Yep. Kicks around third. He's going to score, and it's nine to four. Genbu is the dark divinity. Comes dun, dun, dun. <laughs> oh no. Hello. Mm. Two, one, two. A little better. A little bit. That's clear, right there. Okay. Okay. You see, apparently, this is an entity in the forest they call Odin, and we need to watch out for it. Apparently, it takes the appearance of one of our comrades um, in order to disguise itself so it can attack us. So, if someone's going to be acting very strangely, more so than usual, we should be on alert. So can I trust you to keep an eye out for that? Uh, yeah, I, I'll do my best. Okay. Because I think out of everyone here, you're the least likely person to suddenly have a change of personality. <laughs> I mean, that this will just be silly. Yeah. Uh -huh. Sure. Uh, Perfect. Wonderful. I'll go tell Estonian and Emmerich. I would, yes. Uh, I walk back over to the old lady after hearing this. Herbert's going to go ahead and tell uh, the city and an Emmerich about Odin. Something I can do for you, Sonny. Uh, yeah. Uh, I was just told about what you told Cherbin over there. Do you know the nature of this being? Is it a fiend? Is it a some kind of something from an underworld that we should watch for? It's a primal. Isn't that obvious? 
Not to us. Uh, we're from a different part of the world, and uh, that's not something we're very familiar with, where we're from. I see. Well, uh, don't get too close. Best advice I could offer. Is there uh, any quick way to possibly note something amiss before it gets too close? Yeah, if you've got a long, spiky black sword sticking out of your gut, that's too late. <laughs> Fair. All right, thank you. So, the, uh, the, the imposter thingy, can it, like, read minds? We don't fully know. Like, could our group members possibly just have, like, a secret word or something? I mean, if it could read minds, I guess it would know it, but if not, then should be pretty easy. Well, none of the legends say anything about it being able to read people's minds. And I've seen no evidence of it myself. All right, guys. If, uh, if anyone's suspicious, we ask, and the code word is Kevin's poop is smelly. Don't have anything better, so that'll work for me. Uh, Kevin's not there. He's outside by the chocobos, like already getting, <laughs> stretching, getting his <laughs> arms ready. Really <laughs> jerky. Uh, okay, so Kevin, you went around to the back of the building, which is where the stables are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So it'll head out is and ask really, the... Is that really our cold word? Really? And do you think that some divinity, whatever creature, is gonna guess that? Oh yeah, Kevin, our stats guy to look at. How many foul balls? Don't they know Kevin? They will. Maybe. <laughs> if they hang around Kevin long enough, I'm pretty sure it'll come up in the conversation. <laughs> uh, I'll head out, and as I pass the little girl that uh, Emmerich was playing with, I'll catch. Uh, druid craft and send some little leaves overhead and continue out. <laughs> you druid craft some leaves over overhead of whom? The little kid that uh, Emmerich was playing with. <laughs> Maybe later. That might be planned for later. <laughs> okay, so some leaves just appear over the kid, and Emmerich uh, just just like flicks one of them, and a little dew drop falls on the kid's nose, and he just Aww. giggles and goes for the girl. Oh, so cute! Yeah. He stands up. I'd best be going now. Thank you for the story. It was lovely. And he bows and walks outside. Estinian long since went outside without saying anything to anyone. Grumpy pants. What did you just stop? Oh, the smoke bombs. We were divvying up the smoke bombs in the corner. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and we see everyone like leaving us away. Oh, let's go. Just in case. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so as you go around the side of the building, as indicated, uh, the Chocobo stables are there. And uh, there's a. Uh, Someone there that you didn't see inside, but he's already gotten word from some of the other people. All right, oh, let's see. Counting up here. Is that all of you? And the Rangers have just beaten the Guardians. Are we missing anyone? Are we? <laughs> uh, well, you see the five-ish Guardian soldiers there. You see Emmerich and Estinian. Is anyone from your group not there? They will lose a game to the White Sox. I'd head out there. We're all here. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so, once again, if we're not sure about anybody, the secret passage passage word is uh, Kevin's poop is smelly. I guess secret passage phrase. Ain't that um, true of most people's poop? Eh, so long. It doesn't matter, it's a phrase. <laughs> These chocobos are here. Uh, we just call them Bird. All of them are named Bird. That's what they answer to. Makes it easier to train them. Very efficient. Yeah. 
any sense whatsoever. Uh, find one that's to your liking, hop on, and off you go. What color are these ones? They're yellow. As deep as they are with their great pitching uh, Varying shades of yellow. Some of them are a little bit more brown. Some of them are a little bit lighter colored. But uh, all of them are of the yellow variety. Okay. Oh, well, if, we make it, if we make it out of this alive, they can come back to Ishgard with us, I suppose. You can die to get your personal checkbooks. You can dye their feathers. So you can make it any color you want. That's cool. Yeah. Mine's like a sky blue. Uh, is it yours black? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've got a big black checkbook. Uh, Are you sure none of these aren't slightly off yellow? You know, like gold? <laughs> they are not gold. Nice try, though. And if we really did pay for them, they, I'm sure I could find a place for them at the manor. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> if we really did buy them, then we bring them back to Ishgard if we survive. I, I don't... Okay. I wasn't implying that you can have them. She was just making... Like, you got... You inferred from what she was saying. You can take it out if you want, but she was being... She was, she was being, um... Exclamatory. I mean, if we take him, it's Ishgard that pays for him, so... <laughs> they can put the bill. Then you, you know, just be fucking over a small settlement, that's cool. Uh, we'll close that pretty well, if, they, if they just happen to vanish, then they're assumed dead, Ishgard repays, as per Emmerich's letter. True. And you do see him, uh, there's a small hunting hawk that one of the soldiers brings up to him. Um, it was in one of the cages that they brought from the ship. Uh, you hear him mention something about this is the last one that survived, sir. And uh, Emmerich finishes writing a letter, rolls it up, and attaches it to the leg of the bird, and just sends it off towards Ishgard. Or it sends it off in the sky, and it flies in the direction of Ishgard. Uh, but you load up on guns. Wait, I mean, load up on your chocobos. Um, <laughs> sorry, I went into a Nirvana song. Um, and uh, you begin quickly moving across the bridges over water, past the Aetherite, and towards the uh, the east side of the of the settlement. So let me see, what do I got here for you? Anything else you want to do in here before you take off? We know how to ride Chocobos, right? Like, haven't you ridden them before? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've like well, we've, we've ridden on some and we've flown on yeah. some. Yeah. So yes, you do. Okay. Is there a jewelry store? <laughs> <laughs> no. Dang it. I'm curious what you're looking for. Diamonds. <laughs> oh, duh. Uh, no, there's no jewelry store here. Um, Quickly as you get out of the city, I'm about to take some pictures. Oh, I was sending it to the wrong chat. I'm done. Okay, well, that's the gate leading out of the city. And a couple of minutes after you've, you've left the... Uh, I'd say city, I'm at settlement. Uh, a couple of minutes after you've left Fallboard Float, uh, you begin to see ruins sticking out of the hills. And it looks like these ruins uh, are built to be more underground than above, like intentionally built to be so. But uh, you also see some of those large trees that you fought in the Dervanian forelands. Uh, this appears to be a similar species, or a, a similar creature, but a different family. No, or a different... Similar size? Yeah, a different genus, maybe. There we go. Wait, Kingdom Fight on the Class Order Genus Species. Hitter. Did I forget one? Bravo. Oh, oh. What was that? Kingdom what? Huh? What did you say? Kingdom what? Kingdom Fight on the Class Order Genus Species? Family. Oh, is that right? Family Order Genus Species. Order Family Genus Species? Is that how it Kingdom Fight on Class Order Family Genus Species. Thank you. Do you teach science? You don't, right? Maybe. Maybe. I haven't had to think about that since high school, so I'm going to pat myself on the back, thank you. Yeah. Alright. Anyway. 
outside Rizzo. Where was I? Why do I keep losing my space? I'm s guys, I'm sorry. I'm really tired today, so if I keep losing my uh, train of thought, that's why. Yeah, you sent us the picture, and you were saying that we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Trees. Um, what? No, no. She said trees. Trees. Yes. Um, as you're wandering around here, Estinian and Emmerich kind of slow their chocobos, and to the group, they say, it's best to proceed with caution as we go through this area. The ruins that we're searching for quite a bit further in. We're going to be riding for some time. All right. I'll take your silence as consent. Let's go. Uh, so, um, there's a, not a well-trodden path, but there is somewhat of a path that you can see leading through trees, um, some mountainous areas. You see more of these ruins. None of them seem really accessible at the moment. Um, they're kind of just bits and pieces of old buildings that have been well explored at this point, anything of value that was within them has long since been taken. Um, at the moment, it's little more than just like outcroppings from the ground, um, with the inner collapsed inside on them. As you uh, progress on for the next several hours, you're going deeper and deeper into the shroud. The shroud is so named because the canopy of trees above becomes so tightly woven that it's hard to see the sky. And eventually, at some point, uh, you encounter it. Now, light does come inside, but also with the amount of time that you've been going, you notice that time is progressing, and it's getting closer and closer to the evening. It's not quite there yet, but the direction of the sunlight is uh, indicating that it's like you that, got. Uh, to the it's nearly it. night. And I promise. Does anybody like to do anything at this moment? I wasn't going to use that phrase again because I'll bet you don't even know what a How stable are? Sure. What? How bumpy is riding a chocobo? My dad used to have a store. I know this. <laughs> Chocobos that are well trained will keep the bumpiness to a minimum, but there's no way to eliminate it at all. So I mean, like like reading a book on the back of a chocobo would probably get you car sick. Oh yeah, it would get you chocobo sick for sure. Um, if you could ever focus on the words to begin. Gotcha. Okay, so that's the degree of bump we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a smooth ride as you can hope for on an app. TikTok. Yes. Um, the Chugros are troopers, though. They keep going. They haven't even asked to stop for water or anything like that. Uh, well, asked, indicated that they need water. Um, although you do see at certain points, Skinny um, and Emmerich just kind of absentmindedly reaching into sacks that are on the saddlebags of the Chugros and pulling out what appears to be like almost like a head of lettuce and just reaching around and feeding it to the Chocobo. And all of you have these saddlebags as well. Just pointed that out. Um, but your choke boats continue on, and they seem to be pretty well trained by these people, uh, much like the Stinian said, that they would be. Having have watched, have have watched the stables. And coming but, up after one at a time. Game telecast, we will have twins live for you. Yeah, I don't want to judge starting the score <laughs> with a two run home run. One, two, three, go. Sherbin first, go. <laughs> Could we take a small break, please? Please? I just... Did you say freeze? Yes. Okay. <laughs> just a small break. No, I, I, I'm having trouble feeling anything below my waist. I've been riding in the saddle all day. Um, perhaps a break would do all of us pretty well. Sure. I agree, and I can only feel things above my waist currently. <laughs> Isn't that the same thing she just said? <laughs> Plus the slapping. Oh, right, he's slapping. Kevin, have you been flapping this entire time? Yep. Uh, <laughs> uh, completely fair. Did you notice that the birds have not lifted off the ground? Two strikes to Palacio. <laughs> no. Okay, just checking. All right. Yeah, um, so they find a spot to pull over. 
Oh no, I missed my off ramp. <laughs> Sherbin's gonna. You gotta take the jug handle. Your turn. Sherbin's gonna slide off her saddle and do some stretching before reaching up to uh, feed her chugabo one of those greens. Okay. Um, they call these Geisel greens. Chugabos, the world over, love them. I think they taste sour and awful. I remember seeing uh, seeing them feed these at the stables back in uh, way back when in Idleshire, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, you did see them there. We'll hop off and feed the same. <laughs> okay, you guys uh, stop next to a stream. I've just sent you a picture of what it looks like. Um, when you look the other direction, you see these really large, these oversized mushrooms just sticking out of the ground. Probably going to limit his innings a little bit this year. How much you were going to ramp him up? Almost. Should I kill them, Melinda? Keep him available through September. All right, you heard. TPK, the mushrooms are toxic. John. Oh, sorry. Hey. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> I'm not in character, just John. <laughs> hey. I went in line, that's not my fault. <laughs> Those mushrooms look to be about three, three, three feet or so. More. Bigger. Oh, yeah. You're looking at them from a distance. I won't climb a mushroom, unless they're gooey. <laughs> they aren't gooey, but they are caked in powder. Oh, it appears to be powder. Oh, no. What direction is the wind blowing, if there is any? Uh, there's no wind at the moment. Yeah, Millie will take the butt of a rifle from a distance to just poke the mushroom and see how loose the powder is. As you poke the mushroom, the... The mushroom kind of shrinks in on itself slightly, and then puffs back out, and all of the spores just go flying into the air around you. I need you to roll a Constitution save. Oh, my favorite. <laughs> Two. <laughs> Millie, you begin coughing painfully, uncontrollably, and you're. You fall to the ground coughing. You've been doing this for at least 60 seconds, and people are starting to notice. He's the best left in the game. Oh no, Neely! What did you get into? Neely. Sherb is gonna walk on over to her and kind of look over, stand over her. She's just coughing, like like you you start to see blood trickling down her her um, her lips. As she's coughing, sun comes out of her nose. Oh, jeez. Found the anthrax mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, <boy>. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <Billy> stroke. <laughs> Sherman, can Sherman did, uh, cast detect poison disease? Is that something you have? Huh? Okay, sure. Cast it. Jonathan. Is it something you chose to prepare, though, for the day? It, yeah, it's prepared. Okay. okay. Um, so how does this spell read? Does it automatically identify, or do you have to make a, a check for it? It says... Uh... St. Thomas. Takes 10 minutes. <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> ten minutes to detect poison? So Millie yeah. really dies of asphyxiation while you're casting spells. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm pretty sure she was poisoned. <laughs> the for the duration, you can sense the presence and location of poisons, poisons creatures, and diseases. It casts six seconds. Are within 30 feet of you. It can also identify the kind of poison, poisonous creature, or diseases in each case. So, I think not only would I be able to tell if Millie is poison, I can probably spot what poisoned her. He did just that. It was three one. So indeed, Millie is poisoned. Um, it is a powerful hallucinogen. Oh boy. In, in small doses, and Millie just inhaled a very large dose, at which point it, the body violently rejects it, causing muscle spasms, 
and continuous coughing, which is what you're feeling. I just go to a random merchant and buy one of those antidote potions that they sell all over the place. They don't sell those here. <laughs> uh, and after a couple of moments, Millie just stops moving. There's one guy I would never want to breathe. Is still breathing? Phil, or... this guy right she here. is breathing. Yes, yes. Looks like he's but so very shallowly. He wants to get his arms extended. He oh, I think I think You're we should stop here. And your eyes are open. Do I have any control eyes. over eye motion? Wow. I just want to sit on a mushroom. It's more harder than anyone in the game. I will go over and cast lesser restoration on Millie. <laughs> Okay. As you're casting lesser, lesser restoration on Billy, uh, the spell's magic, you see these little tendrils of light, almost like an octopus, force its way through Millie's mouth and all throughout her body. Like you can see, you can see the, her veins like sticking up as these tendrils of light, light are going through it, like like protrusions under her skin. She doesn't seem to be moving, sorry. She doesn't seem to be moving while this is happening, but her eyes are, like, tearing up. And then the tendrils come out, and uh, they form a ball, like the size of a, of a baseball, of spores that it removed from her body. And it just kind of, like, chucks it away from her. <laughs> You're no longer paralyzed, which is what you had from that. Uh, and, and the hallucinations that you were having are gone. You were hallucinating dragons, small ones, flying all around your face. <laughs> and that part would have been fun. Very thorough, Sid. Good job on that spell. You'd make a wonderful husband someday, taking care of your lady friend like that. Good job. Lily, let's, uh, not touch random things. Probably not the best of idea here. We don't really know what's going on yet. What's happening over here? Now this is a celebration. Well, he's gonna shoot the mushroom. This thing home, From a distance this time? Yeah. Okay. He's gonna blow it up. <laughs> what are you shooting it with? My shotgun. Oh! How far away? Is it a slug thrower or is it... It's both. Um, I mean, how... I was three feet away when it poofed. How, you poked it, yeah. how far did the poof go? Like 10 feet. I'll go 15 feet away and shoot it with a box of shot. Okay. That's the range of my box of shot. We're downwind, or upwind, right? No, there's no wind. Okay, good. When you use your MasterCard, yeah, tap in store for dining. Uh, okay. Poof! You just shoot it, and the, the mushroom explodes outwards in the opposite direction. Spores just raining down everywhere. In that direction. In that direction. And you suddenly see a lot of small woodland creatures, like, running away, many of them just collapsing to the ground after they've got caught in the spore cloud that you just made. Well done. And we're decimating an ecosystem. Hey, hey DX, uh, uh, I'm currently laying on the ground, just kind of <laughs> trying to recover. Uh, remember our friend, uh, the guy who loved those those type of spores and mushrooms? I think his name was Will Wright. What? Who, what? Yeah, you have from I understood that reference. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Twin City games. Uh, you made the game spore. Like, how big are the individual spores? It's like pollen. So it's microscopic. They're really well, not microscopic. It's like grains of sand. Sesame seeds. That big. And you just had a whole like baseballs worth of them in your body. Yeah. The spore balls over in the bushes where they toss it. <laughs> you want to stick that in your gun? I don't know. I should. I should they're about the size, but not the consistency yeah. of a sesame seed. That's why you're able to inhale. I mean, I did, I always oh, sorry, Gavin. I don't remember your friend there. Was he a farmer? Ah, uh, he was the one that always went out and uh, would help collect all the the mushrooms and then all the foraging. He was an expert on uh, all that stuff. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm just tired, and all I'm hearing is Millie dying and choking and being fine. And I hope she's fine. I don't really catch myself. I'm sure she'll be fine. You didn't resuscitate her this time, so uh, she's good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, Millie, you need any resuscitation? I'm not looking. I'm literally just laying on the ground. She is uh, angrily trying to scoop spores into a glass vial. Hey, take that as a no. Yeah. With a shawl around her mouth and nose. <laughs> You're able to collect 
a very small amount. What do they think when they it see blows there, you talking to no. television? Is there another right. mushroom nearby? <laughs> there is plenty of mushrooms nearby. See, okay. I can't be destroying an ecosystem. Okay. This is a natural part of the ecosystem. Yeah, Sherman's gonna Sherman's gonna be carefully. Sherman's gonna carefully cover her mouth and go up to one of the mushrooms and carefully take one or some of the spores into a small glass vial. One and two to Miranda, and then the other okay. question: How tough are you when you're watching the games on the? Millie's doing the same. On the announcers. Depends. Yeah. Right. Which announcer? <laughs> Uh, I'll go over to Stinian and Americk. How much uh, are we planning on making camp for the night here? Or? Well, Stinian and I were actually just discussing that. I'm not certain that's the best idea. Sneaking in under the cover of night may behoove us, but dragons are... They can see just as well on the night as they can in the day, as they say. How much further are we from our our ruins? So the reaction is usually. Stinian just kind of smells the air. I can feel them. They're close. Maybe another forty miles. They were allowed to wait that long. Like that's. So now. After what led to Rocco Baldelli, up to you, Henry. The Yankees get this. I'm ready to kill some dragons. Chase Tingler, maybe ejected from the game. Yes. Well. But it did look, as you said, it looked like it hit the knob of the bat. How's your group fare? Well, stay the night. Years ago, Gene Segura was still with the Yankees. Well, Kevin's. Blapped out, and I mean, I suppose we could tell him not to do that if we're going to continue on. Probably the better course of action. Uh, Millie just breathed in an entire mushroom's worth of pollen and was hallucinating, it seemed. So we're pretty much par for the course on what we normally do, but, uh, well, I'll turn around and look at everybody. Here's the deal. If I get back in that settle, I'm not going to be walking right for a week. Uh, some of the soldiers, one of the soldiers, like, leans over to another one and, like, covers his mouth, and then the two of them start laughing hysterically before catching themselves, and they... <clears throat> Sherman just glares at them. They, uh, they, they purposely don't look at her, at her. Better not. Send them back? Yep. They make Millie, I'd advise you get your uh, your minions in order. <laughs> oh, did you ever get back your uh, wind up night? I mean, I didn't give it, so it would have followed me. So, uh, when you say get your minions in order, the wind up night and Mr. Bucket just come right up next to Millie. <laughs> <laughs> Stadion wants to go in under the cover of night. I, I don't know if resting for a short while and trying to do it while we still have cover might be not be a best. Not, might not be the worst of ideas. What does everybody else think? Yeah, we could. I feel like we could take a short rest and, and then continue on. But I don't like being out here. But are not all soldiers. I didn't catch that. Say that again, please. A two strike count. All of a sudden, jump back in the batter's box. Your attack is done. You succeeded in that. Can you repeat that? Which one? Now you got to go back in there and focus. Two, two. Oh, I said rest. We're not all soldiers. Thank you. I know you said something about soldiers. I just didn't hear Miranda. Okay. Got sent down for about a day and then came back. Whether that well, gave him a mental break. And personally, breather, a dark one. But he's been squared up. He's been There's no contact. natural lighting within the ruins. Yeah, no, three and, two, and the deeper two. that we get in the shroud, the less light will come from the moon or the sun. It's fascinating. So it's hard to say exactly how dark, but I would guess very. 
And if we were to light something and we go in when it is dark, we'd be giving away our position. I don't think that resting for the night and continuing on in the morning is a bad idea. We still have the element of surprise. Make a decision, Everett. I'm getting antsy. Well, I think we should leave it up to our intrepid heroes here. Cliffside side, Ink. What do you say? Well, uh, now, later, uh, tomorrow, tonight, all doesn't matter to me. Just, uh, uh that makes a point. Fly and, uh, and uh, you're, we're gonna have an advantage at night, and uh, I guess it makes sense. I agree with the shroom lady. I, I don't know how much advantage we all would have at night. I don't know how many of us can see very well in the dark. If they can and we can't, like Millie says, we're at a disadvantage. Better to go in on an even playing field in the morning, refreshed, and not have to worry about not being able to see. I, I would prefer to see. I think that's usually important when I'm uh, swinging my sword. Well played, Eric. <laughs> All right, so I think most of us are of the mind to wait until morning. Strike one to Polanco. But we saw him lose that same pitch Miranda's at bat. The, the really Very well. Change up that had a lot of fade to it. And hit off the knob of the bat. I can have the soldiers shut up. Soldiers shut up a light. I'll have these soldiers set up a watch for the night. That way you can rest. I'm not sure he would try for it. Seems a good center, idea. I don't plan on getting a ton of sleep myself, but right it would be helpful to have other eyes. Indeed. Watch out for Odin. We get a me mechanical alarm spell. The word on Sound is not true. Are you saying that? Yeah, no, we're uh, just in case anybody comes within how close. A 20 foot cube, so we have two of them. And what does it do? Any any creature that comes within the range sets off the alarm, apart from the ones we designate when we cast it. Yeah. Okay. What does the alarm, the alarm sound like? It can be inaudible or it can be a bell. Okay. If you want to just, you know, go off in your mind, that type of thing. And what are you setting it up as? Uh, no reason I'm asking all these questions. <laughs> I'm going with audible because it doesn't do a lot of good for Millie to hear an alarm that she can't tell people about. Right, you also want to listen to audio voice. <laughs> yeah, so until the spell ends, an alarm alerts you whenever a tiny or larger creature enter, touches or enters the warded area. And it tell, a mental alarm will ping us if we're within a mile. An audible alarm, it produces the sound of a handbell for 10 seconds within 60 feet. Interesting. Um, okay, so which one of you is setting it up? Well, both to expand the area. Yeah. Does well, that like, expand the Oh, I see. Well, just two separate casts, but it's within 60 feet, so if one goes off, anyone within the 40 foot area would hear the alarm. Okay. All cylinders and yeah. You that way it gives much overlap of the And Millie's uh, sentry is holding around basically the alarm box, a little mechanical knight. He's on patrol with a little alarm box. Would the Chocobos also be alerted if Odin showed up? <clears throat> I mean, survival instincts? If a predator is going to come, the Chocobos might freak out? Um, I'm not going to tell you that, but that's a reasonable thing to assume. The unfortunate thing, Justin, I thought Twins had some great at bats and taking Tyone out of the ball game. What's our exact numbering right now? We have five soldiers. Emmerich and Estinius at seven plus. Much of us. Fix here right now with Genbu and Omega kind of lurking in periphery. Yeah. So, 
Okay. And yeah, so then those 15 of us are designated to not sound the alarm. What about the Chocobos? Yeah, and the Chocobos. Well, yeah, the Chocobos. You just yeah. use your MasterCard. What about? That's magnificent. It makes everything magnificent. The fleas on the Chocobos, yeah. Can you use your MasterCard to tap or order what about the dining the groceries? MasterCard uh, will donate one. He was here, and I saw your larvae. How do you know one of you guys is not already out in? Well, then we won't wake up, so. <laughs> Fair enough. Together. Won't be my problem anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way to look at it. So, roll a new character. Um, Alright, I just got several on my phone. <laughs> I bet you do. Uh, Alright. They're not caught up, though. Is anybody deciding to stay awake at any time with the soldiers? You get to sleep all the way through. Millie will keep watch with uh, Captain Hapsies. Captain Hazzy's? You promoted him? Yes, I did. <laughs> He's the leader of the Misfits, so he gets to be a captain. See, I wrote it down right there. Does he know this? <laughs> really has not a lot of ways to tell him yet. <laughs> so he's just kind of sitting there lamenting the fact that he no longer has an arm, and you're just kind of smiling at him like, Hey, Captain. <laughs> he's like, what? <laughs> or you're right, hey, Captain, rather. Also, um, what, what is the actual terrain of where we set up camp? It's a hilly area covered in grass and, and uh, uh, what's the word? Foliage. Any so, ruin remnants? Yeah, there's some. In fact, I think I just sent some to the chat. What a throw from Bad Dad! Oh, it's all the money! Me? Are you kidding me? Nope, I didn't send it. You see these near the back. Okay, so just some crumbled walls. Yep. No uh, downward entrances. Nothing you can really enter right now. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, yeah, Millie's just sitting on top of that center post then. To keep. Oh, are you camping in the middle of those ruins then? Is that where you want to camp? Seems wise. Yeah, to keep us, something to our keep back. It. Yeah, some amount of cover with the rocks behind yeah. us. So you're staying up for first watch. The captain has the driving becomes quiet. Uh, so do our tires. <laughs> uh, oh, or Sid is going to stay up during second watch. Is that right? Electrified. Second and third, yeah, I guess. Okay, so you're going to sleep for four sleep. hours. And... Okay, cool. Anybody else? No, I'm not, I'm not staying up. Sherb is going to be doing some more stretches before she hits the stack. So it'll be up during the first watch then, and then go to sleep. A little bit. Yeah. Oh. A little bit. All right. I got to clean the uh, gas barrels I didn't clean yesterday so I was tired. And then I'm going to wash off in the stream and then hit the sack. Okay, that was awesome for you. Uh, Captain Hazzy's just kind of looks over and like, What's your story? It all starts here. Wants to steal your voice. That's too bad. They just stole my little brother. 2021 Matching League Jackie Robinson Award. Eight red to win the Rookie of the Year Award. Jonathan India. Slug, speed, he's on base a lot, runs the base as well. Well balanced, disciplined Jonathan India. Unreal. No, no, this was some years ago. Plucked by some flying creature or another. Out of the field where he was playing, never came back. Now at the rookie of the year of the National League. Right here on the MLB. Millie's gonna look real angry as so she hears about the flying monsters taking his brother. Well, we got to do what we can to go on and survive, you know, for those that are left behind. Not all we can do, but I'm not certain that my soldiering days will be going on much longer. And he looks down at his missing limb. Together, we can start something priceless. Just curious, are all those soldiers in dressed in red shirts? No, they're not wearing red shirts. How much of a given bother they wear? Well, 
may have, may have been with the uh, been with the Knights long enough that do for promotion. Maybe they'll take pity on me now. What do you think? That is, unless you've adopted us, as you say. I'm sure you would carry a lot of weight with uh, Ishgar. I'm guessing, right? Because he was sword and shield guy, or was he spear? I, f I forget what the elements were of the sword. Uh, he was. He had a spear. Okay. Um, I was looking at Poe while he was doing this. I'm like, are you stabbing yourself in the back? And he's, like, he's got his back scratcher. <laughs> uh, Millie will uh, reach down to her ankle and pull up one of her uh, side arms. Uh, and offer it to him and see uh, he reaches over with his arm which is not his dominant hand by the way and reaches out and picks it up and just kind of looks it over looks at it like this <laughs> is this not the right music <laughs> His internal monologue has a very interesting soundtrack. <laughs> no, that's not right either. That's the uh, quick time event to stop him from shooting himself by accident. <laughs> Press the button. Press the button. Smack it out of his hand. <laughs> uh, is this one of those things I've seen come out of the manufactory? How does it work? Boom! <laughs> it shoots a shot off into the night. Anyone who's asleep is awake now. <laughs> Not Millie for once. What was that? This thing in looks like he's, you know, he's pissed off. <laughs> He, uh, instinctively, he picked up his spear and just kind of turns it over and stabs it into the ground and then sits down next to a tree again. <laughs> uh, so Millie will uh, take it back for a moment to take the shell out of it. She'll load in some dummy rounds. Not blanks, but just like... Rounds. Yeah, they're they're called snap caps in real life, so they just they have the approximate weight and size, so you can pull the hammer back and fire it without damaging the firing pin, or having an explosion. And then she's gonna try to teach him how to use it uh, while they're doing watch, because one arm with a pistol is better than one arm with a spear. Yeah. All right. Uh, how much noise does it, a snap cap? Make? No, it's literally just a click. Okay. Yeah. If a snap comes from it has a Plastic back where the hammer hits the back of it oh. instead of a primer, which is the explosive. Yeah. Okay. And the reusable, I guess. Yeah, it's literally just, it's like basically if you were to just be just like. I get it, I get it. Typically, I don't usually go down with All right. Um, can you roll a perception check? Twice. First. 18. Second. 17. Yeah, just stack with the off speed, especially. 17? 18 first, 17 second. Okay. It's a relatively quiet night. You do... Um, not Sir Hadzies, he's not quiet. Uh, but you do see, like, some small critters in the forest. You see Tripping balls. <laughs> I was going to say, you do see a, a rabbit that is just doing somersaults. <laughs> <laughs> no explanation. <laughs> uh, appears, not, appears not to have gotten as bad of a dose as you got. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got a bunch of animals tripping balls near you. 
Uh, several hours pass and you begin to feel pretty tired at this point. And Sir Havzi has already called it a night after practicing for a bit and thanks you for the gun. Do you give him any extra ammunition? Yeah, um, I'm crunching the numbers on that. Sure. But at least 10. Okay. Since it uh, would take him longer to reload than it would take either of us. You, you catch him sleeping and you notice that he has like half of a smile on his face as he's asleep. Excellent. Really did a nice thing. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> She's um, Odin! <laughs> no, it's totally in character for Millie to promote explosions. <laughs> and what is a gun but a mini oh explosion? God, there's a character in Horizon Forbidden West that is all about explosions. Do you know what I'm uh, talking yeah. about? Mm -hmm. Like, nothing matters yep, except yep, for explosions. Yep. I love that little mini quest. <laughs> um, Alright, uh, she reminds me of Tiny Tina. Um, yeah. Tiny Tina, Jinx, and other stuff. Or Candy. Uh, season two. All right. You just use your master. Sure, Ben. You went to sleep halfway that through that one, right? Yeah. Sterling K. Brown. Um, okay. You use your master so, sit. Yes. Second watch, and uh, the sound of no more gunshots wakes you up. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, <I'm> quiet. <laughs> yeah. Suspicious. Together, we can start. Uh, Sid will just kind of be sitting and sketching in his notebook. Kind of looking around here and there with the uh, the Newlith next to him, just kind of sitting there, not really doing anything with it. He Every is drawing. Every time that you look at it, it kind of moves a little bit. Smiles a little bit about that and frowns as he looks back to his drawing, which is basically drawing Spooky Sid. <laughs> okay. Can you roll a couple of perception checks, please? I uh, can't. That is a... 16. And a 23. Okay. You notice while you're... while you're drawing. Hello, doctor. Hi, Doc. Hello. Uh, you don't on, hear don't any bugs, any insects. Oh, that's, that's easy. That's nothing. Highlight. You don't hear anyone snoring. You look around and you see the chocobos that were sleeping on their feet that curled up on the ground. Still sleeping, still breathing, but now kind of sleeping more like a dog would. And then Jimmy ruins it. Was that? No, it's just you made that loud noise right as I'm describing it being super quiet. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, we I had to turn it off because it was overflowing. Um, yeah, so. Um, Right here on MLB. That, yeah, that's what you see, Sid. That's what you notice. What's worse, having a okay. It's pretty eerie. All the soldiers are asleep as well at the moment. Uh, Just there me. Are, there are a couple of soldiers that were supposed to be on watch, but they appear to be asleep. Naturally. When you're looking around, you look next to you. And you see yourself. No, it's, it's, I think, coming in that situation, knowing my job. Nice night. Uh, you know, I'm getting the two quick ones. Yeah. Excellent night. Um, you know, there's nothing else to do. Do I need to take Sorry, care of you again? There's nothing else to say, is what I meant to say there. Um, you know, it's, you take care of me again? You know, get back on track. I can. Uh, out there, what do you see? We'll see a lot of darkness. Made some good pitches. Yeah. Really gotta be more perceptive, buddy. And then he's not there anymore. It's baseball. You begin to wonder, did you just imagine that? Did you breathe in some of those scores? At which point you begin to hear it's definitely different, but uh trying to write the 
Sounds like hoof print. Uh, hoof, um, hoof beats. Hoof beats. There we go. Immediately stand up, drop the book, <laughs> and go to Emmerich. Okay. Emmerich is fast asleep. Shake him. <laughs> okay. You shake Emmerich. He doesn't wake up. Excellent. Look out into the woods, see what I can see. You see some movement in the tree line, but you can't really make it out. You have dark vision, right? I do not. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> you still hear those hoof prints, hoof beats. I don't know what the fucking word is. I will cast Dancing Lights. Okay, you cast Dancing Lights and nothing happens. It's frustrating. A frustrated Tyler Duffy after a tough loss to the league's best team. We'll take another quick break and come out. We'll get the manager's thoughts after. Okay, uh, try to wake up Kevin. <laughs> How do you try to wake him? Kick him in the nuts. <laughs> I will uh, shake him at first and see how that works. Okay. Kevin doesn't wake up. Flap him across the face. <laughs> Kevin does not wake up. Kevin let out a fart. Kevin lets out a fart. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Stand back up. Who goes there? You don't hear anything. You don't hear snoring, you don't hear friends, you don't hear insects, you don't hear creatures out in the woods. You don't even hear the rustling of leaves. You just hear hoofbeats. walk to the the edge of where I know Millie and Deus set up their alarm and kind of keep peering out. If my magic isn't working, then I don't know what to go from here. <laughs> you stare out into the abyss. And it stares back. You see a horse moving towards you. It has six legs. And riding atop the horse is your visage. Justin tested positive. Let's do a cute test. Okay. Whoa. It's getting closer. Moving directly towards where you're standing. I'm here to protect the family. Back up a few steps further into the the alarm range. Not that it's going to help me at this point. You see it draw a large curved blade and hold it out just like this as its horse gallops directly towards you. I will try to cast Spiritual Weapon. You cast Spiritual Weapon. Nothing manifests. Well, in that case, all I have is my staff, and I'll hold that in front of me. <laughs> the horse charges at you, and you hold out your staff. It's right upon you now, and you see the sword being swung down on you, when all of a sudden you feel yourself being shook, shook away. A couple of the soldiers are like, hey, aren't you supposed to be on watch with us? Yes. How, how long was I asleep? Oh, so I you sleep? are mumbling something while you're sitting there. Did you hear anything? You, you once again, you still have that same disquieting feeling, but you can hear critters, and you can hear the normal sounds that you would hear at night in the, with the night in the forest. And you see some of your friends stirring, as if, but you know, they're just moving around in their sleep. Did, did, did any of you hear hoofbeats? What, you trying to scare us like that old woman? 
tells ghost stories about Odin. I could have sworn I heard something. Maybe you should go back to sleep. Perhaps we shouldn't have woken you. Something tells me sleeping isn't as comforting as you might think it would be. And Kevin let out another fart. <laughs> Kevin lets out another fart. That's supposed to be a comforting sound. <laughs> <laughs> I smell it this time, I guess. Yeah, you didn't smell it before, but this time you do. <laughs> Excellent. It's just as bad as you thought. <laughs> oh no, the code word. <laughs> While I, I settle back down, I try to cast Dancing Lights. Okay, it works. And I just kind of let them float around since I'm going to be awake again. Yeah. Okay. Um, nice job. The rest of the night goes by, or at least the rest of second watch goes by. But just before the next set of soldiers awakens, you're sitting there and, and you realize something. You can't remember your name. For a good five, ten minutes, you're sitting there trying to remember what your name is, and finally it comes to you. But just the fact that you couldn't remember your own name is very unsettling. So it would be. Who is going for third watch? Well, Sid was also doing third. Well, I mean, was there anyone else? The soldiers. I'm out. asking from your group. Yeah. Okay. Well, third watch is leading into uh, dawn and light is beginning to come through the bows. And nothing else really of interest happens at this point. Morning comes and everyone wakes up. Sid, you gave one level of exhaustion. Okay. What's everyone doing? I'm gonna get up, get dressed, get my sounding sentry, and put it in my pack. I apologize if anyone dies because of this. Uh, Kevin's gonna go up to like the side, like you know, a little ways. He's gonna go poop. <laughs> like out of view of people, or yeah, you know, like you know, a little bit into, just a little bit into the forest, but you know, like uh, I don't know, like a thirty second walk away. Okay. Uh, Kevin drops trowel, digs a small hole, squats over it, and does his business. Kevin, while you're doing that, and you're away from the group, you notice something slithering through the foliage in your general direction. Um, I'll keep open, but I'll, uh... Get a sword ready. Which sword? Uh, just the regular one. So you're, it's a great sword, right? Yeah, great sword. So you're, you're balancing over a hole, pooping while holding a great sword. Yep. A talent. Two, two hands, by the way. Two hands. Two hand sword. Yeah. Yep. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I had that clear. Uh, good image. Thanks for that. <laughs> um. You see a small snake slither past you and just keep going. Uh, with my trousers down, I'm gonna like stop the poop. I'm gonna squeeze it off and start. I'm gonna run into uh, back to the camp. Uh, snake! Ah, there's a snake! Everyone, be careful! It's, it's trying to attack. Then you hold your pants it? up, Kevin. Oh, this is a snake! I, I haven't whooped what yet. I'm worried here. about. I'm worried about your snake, Kevin. Pull your pants off. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. I'm just. I don't want anyone to get hit by a snake. Neither do I. No. Pull your the pants snake. off. <laughs> the snake <laughs> was next to you when you were doing that. I, it was kind of like slithering to me, but you know how it is. I would usually kill something, uh, but uh, I mean, I'm not too worried. It's probably dead. A man <laughs> with his pants <laughs> down is in a very vulnerable position. I, I'm gonna go finish my business. Uh, I just want to warn everyone: there's snakes. Be around. Be careful. 
And uh, I guess I'll go like 10 feet in this time. Finish the business, wipe up, continue on with life. Okay. As you're finishing your business, you begin to hear a sound. I'm not sure if that came through the mic or not. No, no, I heard it. I heard it. Um, not going to think it's that odd. Uh, hey! And he's going to yell out, anyone else hear that? No one answers you. Uh, now I'm gonna try to look at the direction of where it's coming. You see a large black animal, but it's pretty distant and it's hard to make out exactly what it looks like. You just kind of see a shape moving through the boughs, or through the trees rather. Uh, I'm gonna take out my regular sword and head back to the group. The one that hurts you? Uh, no, 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 the non necrotic damage sword. Okay. Um, go ahead. Hey, uh, I swear, I swear I heard, I don't know, like a horse or something. Oh, guys. The X? Oh, do we, do we hear? Yeah, you hear. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> like, what are you for? A, a horse? horse? Kevin? What are you talking about, Kevin? <laughs> yeah, it was, I, I don't know, like, uh, it just sounded like there was some horse, and uh, I looked off in the distance, and, uh, I don't know, some, like, animal? It was super dark, I mean, like, very black. Kevin, get back in here quickly. Uh, I, I'm back, I'm back, my pants are up, I, I'm ready, I just want to let Kevin, everyone hear the horse. Horses and snakes typically make different noises. No, 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 no. I saw the snake. I heard the horse. And then I saw this, like, I don't know, dark animal. Uh, I heard the, the hoof beats last night as well. And, and I saw, well, yeah, I saw a horse. And, uh. Oh, great. It's Odin. It's Odin. The old woman was right. Wait, Odin who? Old woman what? Kevin didn't hear any of this. He has no clue what's going on. That's true. He was in the stable waiting for you guys. <laughs> uh, you don't even have to explain it to me. It's fine. What? It it came towards me last night while I was on watch, and I tried to wake Sir Emmerich up. I tried to wake you up, Kevin, and, and neither one of you got up. And what what are we? No, no, Millie, I, I didn't inhale mushroom spores. I don't think I inhaled any mushroom spores, but you never know. I mean, spores just could be around. You know how those mushrooms are. Turbin, what, what are we dealing with with this primal thing? Does Sherbin know a lot about primals? It's not necessarily widespread information. Um... You just know that the name has a connotation with it that, that implies it's best avoided. And people that come in contact with primals often aren't seen again. We want to avoid this as much as possible. I mean, it's one thing to go to do what we did in the Dusk Vigil, but this is a primal, is a, it's a horse of a different color, literally. Um, if we... If we do anything with primal, we most likely won't survive it. Those who have messed with primal have never to be seen or heard from again. I don't think it was a different color. It was black. Uh, there's only one color, to be exact. But I mean, it was far away. It could have been a different color. I, I don't know. Well, it's a good thing you were far enough away that you couldn't tell. What about if I were sitting next to something that looked exactly like me? You saw You saw it? You mean like that thing on the ship with the firearms? Uh, no, that was different, and I'll have to explain that as best I can if we get out of this, but... No, while I was sitting up last night, I, 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 I took to my left when I was drawing, and I was sitting there and talked to myself for a moment, and then it was gone. 
and then I saw it on a horse coming at me from the woods. <laughs> Are you sure you didn't have any of that mushroom stuff? I question it sometimes, but I'm pretty sure. A little sleep. Oh, I get what you're saying. Nope, nope. See, I want to let you know that's completely normal. Uh, Ma used to call it my, my inside head voice. That's the voice you hear inside your head. So you weren't talking to yourself. I mean, you kind of were, but uh, it's the voice you hear inside your head. Completely normal. Everyone does it. Well, regardless, we should be on alert because we've got two people at least who have seen some sort of sign of Odin. And if he's circling us, if he's circling this camp, we're not going anywhere for, well, I don't know. I don't think we should be going anywhere for the most way. Got it. So, Odin's a snake. I'll be carefully watching for any snakes. Don't you worry. <laughs> uh, I hope that's the case, Millie. That would kind of be the lesser of the evils, I guess. <laughs> Uh, anyway, shouldn't we be getting on to the to, to the chocobos and, and getting out of here already? Can this thing attack us in the morning? Well, Kevin just saw it. I, I, I did see the snake. It, 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 it didn't try to attack me, but it could have. I was worried it was going to attack you all. Not the snake. Not the snake, the, the black creature you saw in the woods, the large black creature. Oh, oh, the horse looking thing. Oh, it's racist. Yes. Oh, so Odin's the horse, not the snake. I mean, oh, again, why don't you guys yes. just say these things? Anyway, uh, I think that we leave Odin be if it's his forest, you know, uh, we shouldn't even really be here. Plus, you know, those mushrooms uh, apparently made Mila kind of crazy. Uh, let's just uh, get back on the chocobos and go kill those dragons. I mean, that's why we came here, isn't it? Well, which direction did you see him? Was it, was it in the direction that we were trying to head to? Uh, I, I was in the, so I point into the forest, not in the direction of the chocobos. Kind of like, you know how you go into a forest to poop? I don't know. <laughs> that's the best way I can describe it. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Uh, I, no, the chocobos are over there. Uh, I saw it someplace way over there. Regardless, it's we should probably just get out of here, and then we don't got to worry about it, right? An excellent idea, Kevin. I find myself in agreement. Oh. Perhaps we should get moving. But as long as we're not walking towards Odin. Don't worry, my arms are feeling great today, everyone. No one's going to fall. Kevin, I've been meaning to speak to you about that. If we're to head into battle, perhaps you should stop your exercising that you're doing upon the chocobo? Exercise? Oh, you mean... No, you mean flapping my arms? That's to make sure no one falls. How else are the chocobo supposed to stay up in the air? They're not in the air. They're on the grass. Did you not notice that they were walking? Yeah, but, you know, but when you flap your arms, it keeps them going forward. Just like the flying chocobos. I'm not sure who told you that, Kevin, but that is not the case. Uh, yes it is. I mean, <laughs> I mean did you fall off your chocobo? I'm just saying. <laughs> and that was to Kevin specifically. That oh, let's, let me see it again. I, uh, 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 hey, Sid, can you read that for me, please? Uh, yeah, uh, Kevin, it says that they, they're they all charged up. It, it's oh. okay. You can stop flapping. See, there you go. I charged them totally <laughs> up. You're welcome. We would be entirely lost without you, Kevin. Uh, I'm just glad I'm here, and I'm glad you guys have me. Let us get moving. Sometimes it's easier to just let it, let it go. Indeed. I'll bring up the rear. The rest of you should get going. Stinian's leading the band. Okay, well, don't forget to bring up the chocobos, too. I mean, you need to got ride those so we can keep going. Yes, indeed. So, everybody mounting up and heading out? Yep. Yeah. Uh, all right, as you get on your chocobos, uh, and you're beginning to get in, in formation, Emmerich pulls up alongside Deus. Deus, may I have a word? Yes. What can I do for you? 
forgive me for saying so, all of your companions are lovely, but you seem to be probably the most level-headed among them. It is true. Should we be concerned about Kevin and Sid? What's wrong with Sid? Well, my knights told me that in the middle of the night he was having a rather strong hallucination, began screaming uh, silently, just opening his mouth, making the motions of screaming without doing so. Is this yawning? Well, well, yawning. Is this something normal? Oh, I don't know. I haven't slept with uh, Lord Ritterling yet, but um, he he always seems to be awake whenever uh, we go out camping, so I don't know if I've ever seen him sleep. I'm afraid that these stories of Odin are perhaps unsettling them, making them see things that aren't actually there. Well, then I think we should all keep our eyes open, then. Indeed. I'm not so certain that I believe it myself. Most of my studies have led to any such mentions of Odin being superstition, folk tale, something to keep the kids in line. You understand? Sure. Yeah, I understand. I, and I don't know who would call their horse Odin anyway. That's such an odd name. Oh, I see the confusion. Odin is actually the name of the rider up on the horse. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the horse goes by the name of Sleipnir, something along those lines. Oh, that's an even weirder name. Yes. You'll get a kick out of this. Apparently he's followed by two ravens named Hunan and Unin. Hmm. Okay, those are more normal names. Are they? Well, I like them. So because you like them, they're normal? Yes. See? That's the level head in this working. Indeed. Well, I will choose to assume there's nothing wrong with our content. Sure. And Kevin, that's just typical Kevin behavior. He's always I like that. Much. However, Sid... Sid is the one that's a little concerning. Well, we need to take a, take good care of him. Should I keep an eye on him? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Dave. Let us continue on. Yeah, that was a very nice conversation. <laughs> Can you say that out loud? Or yes, as he's uh, walking up, I'm like, oh. That's he nice. flashes a smile at you. That joke was amazing. <laughs> Which one? The, I have a slope, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so, uh, you continue writing for some time. It's um, another few hours before you come across this image. And Astinian says, we're here. Uh, where's here? This is where the dragons will be camped. I could feel them. Uh, Kevin looks around. This is a little looking for dragons. He points up the, the stone stairway in front of you. All uh, right. Uh, so I think you're saying they're up there. So what's, uh, what's the game plan? Are we, uh, you know, all going to try to sneak in? Uh, are we going to try to draw them out into a trap? Like, what do you got planned? Well, I'm always of the mind that we should just head in and kill everything along our way. But Emmerich is more of the opinion that we use stealth and caution. To be perfectly honest, I kind of like that first option. I'm kind of that way, too. You know, just uh, anything in your way, you just, you know, hit with your sword. It usually dies. Yes. Most things fall to my sphere. I never really fought a dragon, so uh, it's really up to you and Emmerich. Uh, you tell us how you, we can help, and uh, y'all group will do what we can. Perhaps we should all have a conversation and decide, majority, what the best course of action is. Right, right, right. Uh, uh, Sir Turmeric, uh, so you want to do stealth? I uh, group, uh, uh, what do you guys want to do? Um, I'm actually going to stop everybody there because my brain is mush. I don't know oh, if you can tell it. or not, but I'm having trouble thinking, so I'm going to cut it tonight. Okay. Uh, yeah. I need some sleep, I think. You should stay away from That was another suggestion before it ends. <laughs> yeah, there you go. 
Best of both worlds. <laughs> okay. Um, well, thanks for playing, everybody. Yay! Thank you. Hey, no, no, no. We did a lot, so... You're cutting out now, and I, I can't understand what you're saying. Uh, don't worry about it. We did a lot. It's an awesome, awesome night tonight. Great. Yep. We feel good. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm really like, sorry. I cut it a little bit short, but uh, wow. have a good one, everybody. All good. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye. I don't know. Bye, wow. It's like hitting me like a train. Yeah. <laughs>